Martin, well, it's also been more than 100 days since the lockdown had started, and it seems like working from home may just be what the doctor ordered. Given the rapid spread of COVID-19, many companies are implementing working from home arrangements. While employees who work from home avoid long commutes, manage their own schedules, and remain close to family members who may need care. Managed Integrity Evaluation CEO, that's Michelle Baron williamson joins us now to discuss this. Michelle, thank you so much for your time, and welcome to ENCA. Now, I've just romanticized, right, how working from home is. You're closer to your family members. You don't have to be part of long keys to commute. You can manage your schedule. But is it really that romantic from home? I mean, come on, let's be realistic. Some are finding it difficult to have to have little small children around, having their pets around, having to also clean and cook. And simply it's difficult for them to also ignore those household duties at the same time. No, absolutely. Thanks very much for having me on the show. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think there's uh, benefits for employers and employees. And on the employee side, as you've just mentioned, it can be challenging, uh, especially for those who have people or family that need to be taken care of. You've got little ones, you've got homeschooling, and you've got to try and find that work-life balance. Um, I think at the start of the pandemic, we were all forced into basically overnight working from home, kind of a, a worldwide experiment um, with this working from home exercise. And it has become the norm for a lot of organizations already, as you said, 100 days into into the lockdown. And um, we, we have to adjust. Mm. It's not easy and everybody handles it differently. Michelle, are you still with us? Well, you've got to look at people's personal circumstances, their environment, do they have a home set up, and also give them the technology to enable them to be productive at home. Absolutely. Could this be a long-term arrangement that we're seeing here between employers and employees, whether or not you know, these numbers spike or even this uh, curve is flattened at some point? I think it will be. A lot of organizations are adapting their strategies. There's a big financial gain, obviously, to uh, on the operational side with having people work from home. So I think that a lot of organizations are looking at how many of their staff can they effectively move to remote working. Uh, I think it will become our new norm for, for the most part, post, post whatever is going to happen. Yeah. when that will happen. Right. Then what happens to, I mean, the, some of the commercial uh, office spaces that we're seeing? What are some of the strategies we're seeing here from uh, companies and businesses? I mean, unfortunately, is, uh, we need less people uh, at offices so we can manage, you know, the number of, you know, uh, uh, people that are in contact with one another, those who have con uh, contracted COVID-19 with those who haven't. But then what's the strategy that we're seeing around the usage then of, you know, office space? From what I've seen, and if we look at look at our business in particular, we certainly look at downscaling the office space. So, as you've said, we no longer need, uh, for instance, dedicated desks for employees. If you've got an organization of, say, 100, you're not going to need to have 100 desks going forward. So, I think that a lot of organizations are looking at reducing their work, their, their physical office space, and then sadly, that the uh, real estate industry and that market will take a knock because more and more businesses are moving their workforce to remote working. Right. We also heard, you know, from government just encouraging um, any senior citizens uh, to rather stay or rather work from home. Uh, these are some of the vulnerable, you know, groups, whether you are uh, 50 or 60 years of age and above to rather stay at home because they'd be more susceptible to contracting COVID-19. But also we've heard from the very same, uh, you know, employees saying that they're quite worried about, you know, the, how impersonal that could be and, and the less of, uh, the, rather the lack of, you know, engagement and, you know, personal interaction there. Just in terms of employers separating employees from themselves and one another what, what are we seeing in terms of strategy to ensure that that community of working and a working relationship still continues even if one is at home working from their laptop working from you know their personal space but still they're mm -hmm. engaging with uh, their colleagues yeah I think we've got to be realistic and uh, you know it, it's a double whammy you've got managers that have never managed employees remotely and you've got employees that have suddenly had to become used to working almost in isolation you know sitting in front of their laptops or computers at home and just getting on with it so I think it's important that that managers and leaders understand 
that they still need to to keep their people informed, to keep them up to date with what's happening with the company. Um, you know, discuss strategy with them. Those things are so important so that people still feel like they belong. You know, if you look at the research, you look at Gartner in particular, uh, they conducted an HR survey last year, and a lot of people feel like they're alone. So it's important for managers to look at different strategies in collaboration with the HR teams to say, look, how are we reaching out to our people? I mean, technology is fantastic. You know, we've got we've got a whole Microsoft suite. You've got things like Teams. You've got Skype. You've got Zoom. So managers can set up regular meetings, even if it's a 15-minute a video call or just mm -hmm. a call every day, just to keep in touch with individual team members and then obviously have wider team meetings. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. That's the uh, CEO of Managed Integrity, Evaluation CEO, Michelle Barron-Williamson. Of course, we're hearing that advice coming there for managers to, of course, uh, keep in touch with their employees and to ensure that uh, that uh, engagement continues. I'm not sure if my colleague, uh, you know, Tula Cesar Smelan will survive without me <laughs> in studio. Um, so I'll continue to come to work so that he does not, of course, come I see.